from 100 contestants competing to become the new Master Chef, only three remain. I never ever thought I'd make it to the end. One prize, the chance to work in a top restaurant. I can run with this and change my life completely. Two expert judges to decide who wins. I love being a chef in a great restaurant, but it doesn't get tougher than that. The standards are so high and the pressure is immense. This is one tough, tough competition. But I will tell you something, whoever wins it, it's going to change their life. I do think I've got what it takes. MasterChef is going large. All this week, the three MasterChef finalists are being tested across the spectrum of professional cookery. In this programme, their challenge is to cook to the ultimate in refinement and expense. It's the Michelin star test. Check's gonna come down there. Mon appétit de one scallops, one beef. First, the master chef judges introduce them to the exceptional standards of Michelin cuisine. And that's the difference between way up there at Michelin pro chef and sitting here in the middle somewhere. Then they'll be put to work in three of the best Michelin restaurants in Britain, serving up to real customers. And finally, the biggest test of all, cooking for the restaurant star chefs. One that made Gordon Ramsay cry, and you're going to cook it for me. Right. At the end of the week, one of them will walk away as the Master Chef champion. But first, the finalists face a harsh introduction to the rigors of Michelin standards. The contestants have one hour to cook a Michelin-inspired dish from a selection of ingredients. They have no recipe to go by and will have to devise a top Michelin dish from scratch. We're going to be looking for clarity of flavours, compatibility of ingredients. We want you to be ambitious. We want to see some flair. Have fun. Top chef John Tarode and fruit and veg maestro Greg Wallace will be judging the dishes to the internationally recognised highest standard in the world, Michelin star. What is important is that they understand the great building blocks of great food. And what Michelin star does do is make sure that those basics are unbelievably beautiful and perfect. Michelin star food is the highest point of gastronomic talent and you will not get more attractive plates of food than you get at a Michelin star restaurant. So which of the finalists can achieve the very highest standards of cooking refinement and artistic presentation? For freelance writer Tommy, this challenge is her worst nightmare. Michelin food couldn't be further from her gutsy style of cooking. I always are conscious that I'm a bit kind of slap dash and I'm always chucking in bits and chucking in a bit of that. And I think all my mistakes that have happened so far have been about that. I've got to learn to be more careful. Tommy's decided to cook pigeon with root vegetable salsify and shallot tart. How are you going to take a bird, which is so large, a tartan, which is quite big and gutsy, salsify, which is what it is, and make this look beautiful and pretty? Don't know. Beautiful. It seems to me that you thought of the tart, then thought of the bird, and everything else after that has just been an add-on. No, I've got drawings. I was trying to work out how to put my... That's uh... it. I'll have the egg and chips. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have the egg and chips. And... <laughs> oh, well, look, look I, like, I like the sound of your tart. Um, Great. As, long as, it's not, as long as it's not too strong. Yeah. The problem I've got with Tom's thing, you know, is that it's still butch and robust and, and a bit rough. It's not fine. I'll tell you why, because inside that quite calm, girly exterior is a football hooligan fighting to get out, <laughs> and that's the way she cooks. It is, John. We don't mind that in her, but today we specifically said we want a prettier plate of food. Advertising exec Mark has shown great natural ability. He's only been cooking for two years. He's learning fast, but will he be able to cope with the standards required of Michelin cuisine? Being here now, I think I haven't really studied food, particularly not like the other contestants. I want to win because I need to prove to myself and to everyone else that you don't need to have eaten 
in every single five star restaurant in London to be able to uh, become a master chef. Mark's making an ambitious fish dish, turbot in a mushroom sauce with a crab and potato rosti. Right, tell me how you're going to get the crab into the into the potato rosti. I haven't worked it out yet. You haven't worked it out yet? No. All right. OK. And the sauce you're making at the moment, is this what's going, going on the pan at the moment? Yeah. So you've got what in that pan? That's just the, the liquor from the, the dried set. Right. Uh, and a shallot, a little bit of seasoning and some butter. And reduce that down, a little bit of cream, and then season it, and then that'll make the sauce. I don't know what the, on earth Mark is up to. That's outrageous. It's one of the things we asked for was clarity of flavours. At the moment with Mark, we've got this subtle piece of turbot, a piece of potato with crab in it, yeah. and then, then this sort of very strong mushroom sauce. That's not clarity of flavour. Unless that sauce is tiny around the outside, it's going to be a gross, gross dish. Stockbroker Caroline wants to trade her city job for a career in food. She's a methodical cook, but can she find the flair and imagination needed for Michelin level? To me, you need to be constantly thinking about how can I make it better, how can I refine it. I think you do have to have a sense of wanting to achieve perfection. She's making crab ravioli with scallops in a vegetable broth. How is that going to make the step from being an amateur-looking dish to becoming a professional Michelin um, sort of beautiful, elegant place of food? Yeah. Good question. Well, I'm going to sit the scallops on top. I mean, I'm hoping what you'll actually see is sort of like the beautiful okay. dice of the tomatoes, um, some little pieces of you give it like nice colour and a bit of dimension in, in actually in the in the sauce, if you like. And what is your broth made of? Um, it's a mixture of, of sort of vegetable and some fish stock. How are you going to finish this off? Just, it's going to be like a, a sort of like a, a, a sauce, almost like a, I suppose like a stew. Like a nage. Nage, yeah. A nage is the classic term. Absolutely right. Yeah, no, 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 it's good. It sounds good, but it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a broth. 20 minutes. All right, Mark, 20 minutes. Cooking time is nearly over. The contestants have to produce a dish not just to professional standards, but Michelin standards, refined flavours and beautifully presented. That's it. Time up. Who's pushed themselves that extra mile? Will Tommy's plate of pigeon, salsify and shallot tart prove she can cook with finesse and delicacy? If it was Michelin star, we would have a much smoother sauce than this. We would also have smaller pieces of salsify and they would probably be finished off with a little bit of butter in a pan and they would have a sheen to them. The tart would be smaller. It definitely wouldn't be bigger than, than the game bird. What that is doing on top, I have absolutely no idea because it doesn't really do anything for you at all. We've got a lovely little tart here which is done properly and if you look into here, the shallots themselves are done very nicely indeed. The rest of it just seems a bit, a bit sort of dirty and a bit unrefined, which is a shame, Thomasina, because it could have been a very, very simple, elegant place of food. Let's taste this salsa, because you roasted it, didn't you? Yeah. Good. Got great flavour. It tastes delicious. It's just not fine. I think you're a big gutsy cook. You're a brasserie cook. I think you struggle with this Michelin style. But somehow or another, we've got to see just a little bit more finesse. Caroline has cooked a vegetable broth with crab ravioli and scallops. Will it show enough flair to take her to Michelin level? I think it's a, it's a really nice presented dish, and I think that it, it is elegant. The textures will work, I think. The scallops are beautifully cooked. It tastes great. I think your broth is OK. It's just, to me, not concentrated enough. You've got a spoon there, Caroline. Yeah, just very quickly, I want you to taste the broth. Because if you do it, if you then taste in your mouth and you feel in your mouth, 
at the back of your palate, there is nothing. nothing. Yeah. That yeah. depth is missing. And that's the difference mm. between way up there at Michelin Pro Chef and sitting here in the middle somewhere. And it's just almost there. Good job. Thanks. Mark's cooked pan-fried turbot in a mushroom sauce with a crab and potato rosti. It's an ambitious combination, but has he managed to pull it off? Your fish looks like it's been cooked well. It's beautiful, translucent, which is great. Your rosti is better than I thought it was going to be. So now the whole lot together. And what I find with it is what I expected, and that is that the mushroom sauce takes over okay. from everything else. They're very strong indeed. Mm. And when you're talking about a, a lovely, sweet piece of soft, translucent, perfectly cooked fish like that, mm -hmm. it's a difficult combination. But I've got to say, it's presented very well indeed. And I didn't expect it to be as clean as this, or as crisp as this. I've got to disagree with you, actually, on this. Yeah, no, fine, we're allowed to disagree. I'm, I'm, I'm not that happy with it at all. What, at all? No, I just... Uh, I don't like the idea of the fish sitting on top of what's turning into a crab cake, if you like. OK. Um, I really don't like the look of the sauce or the taste of it, and uh, I can't... I just can't get enthusiastic about it. It just looks... It just looks too scruffy for me. I don't really agree with you there, Greg. You don't? No, I don't. I think that looked like a good plate of food. I think maybe with a little less sauce, I think that would have been a perfectly presentable dish. Look, you, you, you're really making massive progress, and I can't fault any of the flavours individually. It just doesn't come together. Three weeks ago, I would have not have seen you could yeah. produce a plate of that's, food that's, like this. That's, that's fair. And this is, you have come a really long way. OK. Thanks, Mark. Cheers. It was a hard test, but it's going to get harder. The contestants are about to be thrown into cooking's toughest and most expensive training ground. Yeah, leave it. Yeah. Get my hand to clean up. They have to go and work in three of Britain's finest Michelin star restaurants. Mike, you send that bit as well. Be to just kill off now. But after today's performance, will they cope? Michelin starred food is extremely difficult. But all I wanted to see from these guys today was that they could turn out very attractive plates of food. That's what I really wanted. And I'm immensely disappointed with Mark's and with Tommy's. It was my one chance to show them that I could do refined, elegant food. And instead, they think I'm a butch, brassery cook. So it looks like I've got a lot of work cut out of me uh, to change their opinion. When we look at young Mark, today he actually cooks a piece of turbot very, very well indeed. You've got to give it to him. The guy has come a long, long way. I'm just not impressed at all by the two dirty plates of food I got. And that's what I got, dirty plates of food. I think John was fair. I think Greg wasn't eating the same plate of food as anyone else. I used my initiative, I was creative. I think I made a good plate of food and I think they were a bit harsh. You know, Caroline, way above the other two. I think her food was clean. I think it was crisp. I think it's well cooked, under seasoned, unfortunately. However, got most of the ingredients right, and that puts her in the first place. I push myself hard because I want to. I want to make sure that I can achieve the best I can do. It's the biggest day of our finalists' cooking careers. The contestants each have to work during a lunchtime service at a different Michelin-style restaurant. Tommy is at Le Gavroche, the first British restaurant to be awarded the highest Michelin ranking of three stars. Its owner and head chef is Michel Roux Jr. of the legendary Roux dynasty, famous for French oak cuisine at its finest. Who's is that as well? Get rid of that stuff. Standards of perfection don't get any higher than in his kitchen. Tommy's slapdash habits won't be tolerated here. Being a little bit nervous at the prospect of cooking at Le Gavroche for uh, Michaoui, who apparently is a perfectionist. I think it's probably all looks absolutely perfect on the plate, the type of food that I'm not naturally good at. So it'll be a challenge for me anyway. Hi, Tommy. Hi. Welcome to Gavroche. Thank you. Michelle gives Tommy the intricate job of plating up the starter dish. A layered marble terrine, marbre. Terrine of cabbage. Yeah. Ham. Yeah. 
foie gras. Yeah. One portion costs twenty pounds. Okay. This is okay. your job. Right. Your responsibility. Right. They have to be perfect. Okay. You've got a busy lunch. Right. Every single plate the same. Right. Okay. Okay. I think uh, what we're looking for in the terrine is really the skill of how she's cutting it, steady hands, and, and the positioning of the terrine on the plate has to be perfect. And we're looking for precision. When you think of uh, the fact that it's Le Gavroche, it's a big responsibility. Oh dear. Is that your first one? That was my first one, yeah. Hurry up, I've got the on the bus. Expensive produce is going to waste, and Michel's customers are being kept waiting. Marks at two-star Michelin restaurant The Square, under the watchful eye of head chef Philip Howard. Marks put in charge of making a starter, all on his own. It's a wild mushroom and chicken mousse tortellini. It's a new experience for me, and yeah, it's part of our responsibility. So. You know, I don't know who's been bigging me up to fill. I'm going to cook it simply, good seasoning, and just try and do the best dish I can. Simple as that. Being as this is no simple pasta dish, it's finished off with one of the most expensive ingredients in the world, white truffle. They're currently £2,000 a kilo. How much is one of that worth then, that there? That's about 180 quid. Yeah. At that price, there's no room for error. Caroline is at The Capital, the only London hotel restaurant with two Michelin stars. It's run by French chef Eric Chauveau. The thing is going to kick off, yeah? yeah. You're going to go from 0 to 60. Checks going to come down there, eh? OK? Yeah. We're going to call the checks. Yeah. And they're going to start getting everything ready. Yeah. Caroline's job is to help check the dishes before they're sent out to customers. It's one of the most important jobs in the kitchen, as presentation is everything in Michelin star food. It's a job that should suit Caroline's methodical eye for detail. One appetizer, one scallops, one beef. Oui. No, no, no. Do not put the salad until we roll the flipping omelette. Sur les auto, one scallops, one beef, one gnocchi, one rabbit. Uh... Oui. But as the orders start to come in, Caroline's worried she'll be out of her depth. Obviously, there's so much going on, um, and there are so many people um, that I'm just a bit worried I'll be stuck in a corner um, and, and not really know what's going on. And she has another problem. The common language of the kitchen is French. Pas aussi sec que ça. Non, non, pas aussi sec que ça. Qui a un peu de mouchure encore. Non, mais la peau est la peau est crispy. La peau la peau est crispy. Et je veux un petit peu de mouchure qui reste un peu de. The finalists are working to the highest culinary standards and in the pressurised environment of world-class kitchens. And by 12.30, Mark is in trouble. Where do we put that chicken mousse? He's lost his filling for the £50 starter. Someone went and hit it for us. Um, for Mark? Yes, sir. Dog. Uh, got it With the restaurant opening in under an hour, Philip's less than impressed. Provided a lot of space to work, um, but you want to try and keep. Yeah, it's one of the reasons why I've got to try and work logically, professionally, and methodically, because you just, there's just not a great deal of space. Mm -hmm. It's just hard to concentrate, and I'm, I'm trying to do it at the same time as learn it. So. At Le Gavroche, Tommy finally completes her first plate. But will it meet the exacting standards of Michel Roux? All right, don't worry about that. Yeah, uh, give me another one. Come on. All right, all right. Look, hey, what's the mess? Come on. Give me another one. That's the third slice, sixty pounds worth in the bin. Michelle gives her just one last chance to get it right. Is that yours? Yeah. Okay. Good. All like that. Right. Every single one like that. Now, with the orders coming thick and fast, she has to keep up the standard. No fingerprints. Good. Last two or three have been perfect. 1.30, and the capital is in full swing. Risotto is yours. Risotto. Okay. As well as checking the plates, Caroline's helping to prepare a risotto with quail's eggs. 
parmesan. Really good pinch of that. A little bit more. That's it. Okay, on the pass now, we're going to finish rolling that. Just before the plate goes out, Caroline's fastidious eye spots a mistake. Do you think there's only one egg? Uh, yeah, you see? Hello? How long have you been here? She's so been here two minutes. She notices only one egg for two risotto. I mean, you know. Once again, Caroline's attention to detail impresses. Fantastic. Two risotto gone for yes. Uh, get, in the, get in the hang of it. Okay, learning, exactly. learning how to command. Pass, yeah? Command and control. That's the thing. Command and control. Back at the square, Mark's chicken mousse has turned up, just in time, as his first yeah. order is in. Okay, then we have table thirteen. That's the two chicken tortellini away. Yeah. Okay, so Mark. We have six and a half minutes now to make thirty ravioli. Finish right. the sauce. Get everything done. That's not quite big enough. Ah, I'm doing a really good job of this. OK, I'll tell you what you do. I'll, I'll do these, because you've done a couple. OK, got the sauce on warming. Yeah, don't, don't warm, want to, OK, yeah, don't let, don't let it boil too hard. Just, just put oh, a bit yeah, more yeah. sauce in the pan. Show it in. Two carvers, one tortellini special. Mark, that's another one, yeah? Yeah, yeah chef. Mark is feeling the pressure. He's now got three orders on the go. He needs to get them out and fast. And the presentation must be perfect. It'll be tortellini, chicken wing, bit of the, bit of the sauce, a bit of parmesan, lovely oval, oval plates. But before his dish hits the dining room, it needs its crowning glory. We've now got to put the white truffle on. And at £2,000 a kilo... You can't waste it on... That's about, that's about 5, 10, 15, <laughs> 20, 25. That's now basically about £50 worth of, of stuff. It's spot on. It is. Lovely. Cheers, pal. Very good. Service is winding down, and the three contestants have survived so far. I wasted quite a few slices of the terrine in the cutting, but I was quite pleased with how I placed them up. So that was good. I really enjoyed it. The mushroom tortellini that I made today with the uh, white truffles was, without doubt, the finest thing I've ever, ever cooked. In fact, it was probably the nicest thing I've ever put in my mouth. Amazing. I'm gone, I'm gone. The more you see it, the more you realise that it's really hard work. Really, really hard work. But, I mean, physically hard work as well as quite stressful. So. And it's not as well paint stop working either. Lunchtime service is over, and the three finalists now face their greatest test. They have to cook a dish from their restaurant's menu, and it's going to be judged by their restaurant's star chefs. As the contestants get cooking, John and Greg arrive to get an update on their performance so far. To us, he seems to have some energy and he seems to have yeah, some potential. Yeah. The problem is he's still a novice. Does he have the qualities that you're looking for in a pro chef? He's got a sense of urgency. He's enthusiastic. He needs to be disciplined as a chef, so he can say he loves food. He obviously loves cooking, but it probably benefits him just just being sort of. I'm not saying yeah, sort of. I'm sorry, not saying knock down a bit. Say right, you need to actually get serious about this now. Then. Mark's cooking one of the square's signature dishes: sea bass in a mushroom sauce with a garlic mousse. Unlike cooking for John and Greg, I mean, I'm in this bloke's restaurant. I'm in his. I'm in his kitchen. Cooking his food that he showed me how to do. So I hope that I do it right, to be honest. It's a simple, classical winter seasonal mushroom based dish. If it's cooked well, the various components, which are all simple in their own right, are, uh, are delicious. Um, but if he hasn't followed the recipe properly and cooked it carefully, it'll just be completely flat. It's a huge challenge for Mark. He's only been cooking for two years. Earlier, Mark's first attempt at Michelin cuisine disappointed Greg. I'm not that happy with it at all. What, at all? No, it just looks too scruffy for me. Has he learnt enough to impress the head chefs of one of Europe's finest Michelin restaurants? Yeah, that's it, ready to go. Looks like the real McCoy. Oh, thank you very much. So, uh, looks. <laughs> looks, yeah. <laughs> Top marks for the presentation, but can he achieve a refined subtlety in his flavours? Um, I said the sea bass are probably a tiny bit overcooked. The mousseline could have had more garlic. It's just a little bit too, a little bit too mellow. But the mushrooms are delicious, actually. Mm. Seasoning is perfect. Um, it's basically very good. Yeah. 
You've cooked the proper place of food. Thank you very much. Mark's pulled it off. Over at the capital, Eric has picked a dish to really test Caroline. So to ask you today to make one dish by yourself. She's making chili squid with rabbit in Provencal sauce. Do you think she's really got it? Do you think well, she's really got what it takes to be a great chef? Well, if she put her mind into it, I'm sure she could do it. She's got common sense and she did listen. She's a good house cook. But to turn her journey on into a chef, that, that's, again, that's a leap. Will Caroline be able to make that leap today? She's got the technical ability, but can she find the extra flair to take her to Michelin level? To pass judgment, Eric has brought in his second in command. Yes. Uh, just looking at the cooking of the rabbit, and yeah. it's perfect. It's uh, yeah, uh, cooked, not dry. Not be not. Use a spoon, actually. Use your finger. So much better. That's nice. Oh, you see, you see the. Um, Stuffing. I wouldn't have done it better. <laughs> Very kind. <laughs> but she's blushing. I'm going home now tonight, and she can do the service for Richard. That's it. <laughs> I think we're just so sure about that. Both Caroline and Mark have done well. It's now Tommy's turn to step up to the stove. What's the next step for her today? The next step is the souffle suissesse. Whoa, that's mean. Yes. It's a Gavroche signature dish. It's one that's been on the menu for 30 years. Wow. One that made Gordon Ramsay cry. And you're going to cook it for me. Right. For Tommy, this is the ultimate test. Delicate and precise cooking has been her greatest stumbling block in the competition. I think you're a big, gutsy cook. You're a brasserie cook. I think you struggle with this Michelin star. It's a cheese souffle, twice cooked, on double cream. So this is going to involve skill, knowing how to whisk the egg whites, when to stop whisking, cooking them, very precise on the cooking, very easy to muck up big time. It's a delicate souffle. Tommy's souffle will now be tasted by one of the finest palates in the culinary world, Michelle Roux Jr. Can she finally prove she's capable of refined and elegant cuisine? <laughs> well, And you say a bit more pepper, I say, yeah. in general, just a little bit more seasoning. Yeah. Just a little bit more bite. The souffle itself is holding very well. The texture is smooth, yeah. which means you've whisked the egg whites to the right consistency. I would have no problem in serving this recess to my customers. Well done. I loved it, actually. I thought it was brilliant. What do you think you're going to take from today? Uh, learning more about um, attention to detail and taking real care over everything. Today, all three contestants have excelled themselves, cooking to the highest culinary standards. Come out and be told that you've done a really good job. It's just, it makes, makes you very smiley inside. <laughs> I couldn't believe that I had cooked it. It was just so unlike me. I was totally gobsmacked by the whole experience. It was utterly, utterly amazing. I absolutely 100% enjoy being in that kitchen at there. It's definitely hammered home that um, I think I'd like to do this for the rest of my life. Two more days to go before the MasterChef champion is decided, and it's all to play for. Tomorrow, the contestants will audition for television cookery show Good Food Live. Today, we've got a brand new chef, Caroline Brewster. Who will have that winning ingredient? Star quality. Take your fingers out of your mouth. You're on television for Sorry. goodness sake.